Hello everyone. Rather than do a video whereby I react, which was an option I considered doing, I instead decided to explore the changes that were made in the show from the books. For those who have not read the books or for those who need more context. So I would be doing this for every episode of season one of Netflix Shadow and Bone. So let's get started. In the books, Alina's parents were killed in the border wars that ravaged Ravka. In the show, they were consumed by the fold, which is clearly a reason to make Alina's interaction with the fold and the story that ensues a more personal one. We don't actually read about Mal brawling onto book two as he only does it to deal with a rapidly changing world where he feels like things are spinning out of his control or he wants to blow off steam. In the show, we see him brawling in episode one. Now, if that still applies, then contrary to what he tells Alina, he was worried about his potential assignment and considering he was assigned to the fold eventually, he was right to worry. Then there's the fact that in the show, Mal loves Alina. Now I'm sure my words sound weird right now because of course Mal is in love with Alina. They are Malina after all. But see, in the books, we don't find out until way later that he loves her. However, in episode one, he turns down sex with Zoya and chooses to take dinner to Alina instead. In the books, however, he did actually fuck Zoya, which contributed to Alina's jealousy and animosity towards the other woman. Alina in the show is Afshu, which is a marked contrast from the books where both her parents are Ravkan. This is what highlights a sense of isolation and the discrimination she faces on the show. In the books, she's so obsessed with being different from the other girls who are seemingly prettier than she is. Pekka Rollins has always been a bit of a bumbling dumbass held up against the brains of Kaz Brecker, but he's even more of an idiot in the show at this point. Dressen wants a heart render that's a Grisha who can manipulate the body and finding him one is a surefire way to get him to bring your crew on board. Pekka sets about acquiring a heart render by threatening a club owner and forcing him to hand over his club and by extension his heart render because in Ketterdam the Grishas are indentured servants. You might think not bad so he threatened the man, he got his club and he got a heart render in the deal. But here is where he shows his stupidity because Kazbreka pays the heart render instead for an hour of her time and leads her to the meeting with Drissen and so he gets the price. It's such a common sense solution which makes you realize just how really really dumb Pekka Rollins is and this is important for the rest of the story because we will encounter him in further seasons. To force the arm of her supervisors to get her to follow Mal into the fold, Alina burns the navigational maps with the expectation that because she volunteered to go, she will be the only map maker taken on the skiff. Unfortunately for her, her action forces all the map makers in her unit onto the skiff, the skiff being a boat. Now in the books, there isn't any need for Alina to burn the document as her unit were meant to make the trip anyway. This change, however, allows us to see Alina take an active role in protecting Mal and you see how she and Mal look out for each other, which makes their relationship even more believable. I can't believe I'm saying this, but god damn, Alina is cute. Sailing into the foe, word is, everything has to be in total darkness, except for a single blue flame. When that flame goes out, one of the idiotic cartographers lights a lantern, which then sets off the Volcra, the Volcra being the monsters who reside in the foe. This is a much better explanation than in the books where the fire wielding inferni grisha decide to all light up in the fold which was an action that had most readers asking what on earth was that for? So yeah, the show handled that way better. Better the singular action of a man who wouldn't listen, damning them all, than a group of soldiers who should know better, damning them all. Alina shooting at the Volcra didn't happen in the books. In the books, Mal was the one who, although injured, shot the Volcra to save her. This is yet another way the show shows us, even with the flashback to when they were kids, that these two have been saving each other for a while. And it's yet another way that the show is giving us soft boy Mal, which is really making me like the character and I think a lot of people who did not like Mal in the books would really like him in the show because he's so much better. In the books, Alexei dies. Alina was mid-pleading with him when the Volcara grabbed him and pulled him into the darkness. In the show, however, 
however, is killed by Drissen after revealing Alina as a Sun Summoner. So either way, R.I.P. Alexei, it's a pity that you're not a main character in these books because you would have survived. Finally, seeing that this bit of story with the crows is a prequel, it stands to reason that everything to do with the Drissen job isn't in the books. Also, the crows have been aged up as by this time in the books, they should be much younger. But here we can see that they are the same age as Alina, Maul, and all the others. Also, it goes without saying that in the books, the crows were not contracted to kidnap Alina. They were eventually contracted to kidnap another character, but that character wasn't Alina. Even though in the books, at this point, when it is revealed that she's the Sun Sumner, a lot of players try to grab her. So it actually does make sense that if they are setting a prequel for this story with regards how they're incorporating the Six of Crows dregs into it, this is a perfectly logical way in which to do so.